I see the crimson wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, mighty to save, points to his wounded side. The cleansing wave I see, I see. I... The writer Gloria Jehoda called St. John's Episcopal Church the gentleman's path to heaven. It was the third church um, founded in Tallahassee after its own founding in 1824. Behind me is the St. John's Cemetery, which was started in 1840. Uh, it originally was part of the Old City Cemetery in 1829. We are at the corner of uh, Call Street and Martin Luther King Boulevard, and in front of me is the Old City Cemetery, in back of me is um, the St. John's Cemetery. I'm Bob Holliday, president of the Tallahassee Historical Society. Um, there has been e extensive work going on on locating graves, marking graves, restoring graves at St. John's for a number of years now. Uh, our December the 8th Historical Society meeting will be at St. John's Episcopal Church. The efforts to, to list all the markers, to list all the people who are buried here, uh, to restore this cemetery have been, have been ongoing and are sort of a fundamental uh, historical project Thing for both this church and for, and for Tallahassee. And I'm here with Betty Ashler um, and David Proctor, both of whom are members of the Historical Society and both of whom have been closely involved in the work on this cemetery. And Beth, uh, Betty, tell us how this thing got started. Well, to tell you the truth, when Bill came home in August of 2016, and we know all how August is, we sweat behind our knees, he was really discouraged and he said, you know, I just don't know if anybody even cares about our, the cemetery or knows where it is. And I said, well, I think education is a big part of it. So I just helped design a project to um, get the information for the cemetery, and it took four years to identify everyone and two years to more or less edit and collect the information. And now, in a few minutes, we're going to introduce you to some of the things that we have learned. Thank you, Betty and Bob. And yes, the, the story of St. John's Episcopal Church and the cemetery is just a key part of territorial Florida and on, onward all the way to the present. But there's quite a resource here. This cemetery is a who's who of Leon County and territorial Florida as far as people who are buried here. They all have stories and it is can be used in so many ways. The members of St. John's can know this story and deepen their faith. The broader community can find the historical interest in it. Florida historians really need to know this story. There is a lot here for Florida history. So from many angles, it's a valuable project and it has a lot of reach. Um, we think it's a terrific project and when the story can be told in an organized fashion with a website, I think people will be fascinated by it. Really the cemetery is absolutely kind of figuratively speaking, within the shadows of FSU Special Collections, which has helped us enormously to store the materials, and also Florida Archives, yes. where you can go and visit in the museum there. So we are really very, very fortunate to be so close to all of these institutions. Well, Betty and David have graciously agreed to take us on a sort of mini tour of some of the markers in this cemetery. <laughs> Um, in the cemetery today, so uh, let's do it. Let's go. Let's do it. I'm ready. Let's do it. So tell me about the grave here of William Bloxham. He is one of two governors who, who, is, who is buried here. This is a pretty imposing marker. 
Well, it certainly is if you're looking at it from where we're standing. Governor Bloxham was born in Leon County and raised on his family's sea cotton plantation. It was known as Buena Vista. We even have a street off of Tennessee named Buena Vista, which he later owned. And he was really the first planter in Leon County to abandon the practice of raising cotton and he switched to crops, which was kind of a unique adventure. Now, at the beginning of the Civil War, he organized an inventory and commanded it during the duration of the war. He was actually a two-term governor, and it was 1881 to 1885 and 1897 to 1901. So he played a big part in Florida's um, politics. The Bloxham plot just illustrates the importance of the cemetery. Any Florida hist historian working on Gilded Age post-reconstruction Florida is going to want to know the story of Governor Bloxham and the plot here and his family and everything else. So it's just another great historical resource here for any Florida historian. And Governor Bloxham is buried here with his wife and his two children predeceased him in death. They're over here. Um, Maddie's on the left and then his son William Jr. is on the right and then his the governor's parents are on the stone on the left, on the right there. So he has his family. This is truly a block some block. <laughs> All right, let's proceed. This is the Robert Berry Augustus Austin plot. And the nice thing about this in terms of interpretation is the fact that about 23% of the deaths in this particular historic section of the cemetery, they, they were children. And yellow fever was one of the illnesses that took its toll on the city during the, and the surrounding Tallahassee and the surrounding regions about this time. There are certain definite ear markers for the yellow fever. The 1840s was one of them, later in the um, 1850s. But in June and early July of 1841, the yellow fever descended upon Tallahassee with a vengeance. And if you'll notice the inscription on this, the people of this particular time gave just lovely tributes to the loved ones that died. This to me is one of the more interesting markers in the cemetery and it speaks to the entire antebellum southern culture i think this is john kirkpatrick um, campbell who was one of several people in early tallahassee who had the misfortune of being killed in a duel and uh, uh i'll david i'll ask you to sort of explain a little bit the the, the, the code duello and the dangers in accepting a challenge, but maybe even the greater dangers in not accepting a challenge. Uh, precisely, Bob. In the antebellum South, there was a culture of honor and personal honor especially that was very strong. Historians have tried to assess where it comes from. It could be the Celtic heritage of the South where those concepts were strong in the Celtic British Isles, but it was real and there were many duels fought. And if you didn't fight the duel, then you were looked on as a coward and probably lost credibility. However, just ask Alexander Hamilton, uh, if you did fight the duel, <laughs> oh, well. you may not live to tell about it. So it was quite a conundrum, but there were there was a culture of a very prickly personal honor, being quick to fight about things, and and to understand the antebellum South, you need to know about dueling. And here's a perfect primary resource. Well, dueling, right here. Uh, correct me if I'm wrong. Dueling was illegal in territorial Florida. Yes, it so was. So if you got one of these, if you got one of these challenges, you needed to go someplace where it was not illegal, and that would have meant about what 30 miles north of here to, 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 to Georgia. And there's a little community north of here called Mannington where a, a lot of these duels were fought and where this one was fought. Betty, go ahead. Well, and Francis Epps was a very good friend of John Campbell and he really just, he was his devoted friend and he really begged him and tried to get him not to do dueling, but he did and fortunately he lost. 
and they did not even tell John Campbell's wife about it. They told um, they told her that he had fallen off his horse. Well, that did not happen. Uh, she read about a year later. She read it in the newspaper what happened. And so she didn't find out about it, it for was a, a year. year. It was a whole year. Holy cow! Yeah, it was really sad. So, any rate, that's the story of part of the South at that time. We're here in front of the grave of John Grattan Gamble, and it's hard to find a family, I think, that was that was more uh, prominent in early Florida, early Tallahassee, than the, than the Gamble family. The Gambles, there are still streets and there are still places in Tallahassee named after the Gambles. The Gambles ended up um, with a um, rather elaborate plantation down in the Bradenton area in which at the end of the Civil War, uh, Confederate Secretary of State Judah P. Benjamin managed to hide out before he managed to escape from these shores and go to England where he rebuilt an important illegal career. So the gambles are important. This is, um, you're looking at a grave of George McGinnis. Now, he and um, Turbot Benton were some of the earliest patriarchs of the Tallahassee, and they were really the county's largest landowners. Both of these men migrated from Maryland and settled here with their families. Yes, this is, this is the plot of the Grays. Um, and Anna Boyd Gray is the daughter of the Reverend Horatio Nelson Gray. And for the Grays, you just want to understand they were missionaries to the Seminole Indians. And they were living in Leon in, in what is now Jefferson County. Um, they were involved during the Second Seminole War. In fact, this grave had to be moved over here to get it out of the way of the conflict. So, Second Seminole War, missionary work with the Seminoles, just quite a story. So, so what do you guys think that the great Napoleon Bonaparte, uh, defeated at Waterloo, exiled and so forth, would have thought if he'd lived long enough to realize that his nephew was, was buried out here in the sticks of, nor of northern Florida with, with, with nothing here. He came here early. 1825 is like a year after the founding, so he was here early. Well, if you want a connection with the Napoleonic Wars and the whole Napoleonic era, right here at St. John's Cemetery, Prince Murat, the son of Caroline, who was Napoleon's sister. And of course, their plantation was Bellevue, and it is now preserved at the Tallahassee Museum of History and Natural Science. So when you're out there, you make that connection and then with Napoleon. So the plantation was Lapona, and she was, of course, a, I believe, a descendant of George Washington. So once again, if you want connection- George with, Washington and Napoleon. You know, figure, figure, I mean. We got Napoleon, we got George Washington, we got <laughs> Bellevue at Tallahassee Museum, anything you want. So just another great resource, another great story for uh, North Florida history. I mean, if you were, if you, I mean, followers of Napoleon scattered to the wind after <laughs> yes, he was yes. captured and exiled and so This is the one place all visitors want to see. It when is. they come to um, the cemetery. Yeah, the first, I, I used to collect postcards, and the first postcard I ever got of Tallahassee was a postcard from Murat Grant. Murat. <laughs> Murat Grant. And of course, I should add, he was on the board of directors of the Union Bank. Yes, he was. Tallahassee's Union Bank, right on Apalachee Parkway. A financial genius, yeah. obviously, <laughs> considering, yeah. considering how long that lasted. More amazing North Florida history at St. John Cemetery. Here we are at the grave of the Reverend Dundas Skull, and he was a rector at St. Paul's in Quincy. Um, he's famous for a number of things. He was a close associate of Dr. Carter, of course, uh, after the rebuilding of St. John's from the Great Fire in 1879. 
But Reverend Skull was involved with the Freedmen's Bureau during Reconstruction. I mean, the Freedmen's Bureau, I mean, it was a wartime uh, measure created by the Lincoln administration to basically help the freed enslaved people find homes, find jobs, find, mm -hmm. find family members who they might have lost. And so one of the things they focused on, particularly in the aftermath of the war, was education. And he was the principal at the Freedmen's Bureau School, or the head of it, in um, Midway. So here we have a connection with Reconstruction, with Freedmen's Bureau, Black History, everything. Yeah. And in more detail, his wife and his wife's sister helped him in this um, project, in the Freedmen's Project. They were teachers and helpers right. to Dr. to Reverend Small. So. We're actually double blessed today, I think, because we actually have a member of the Epthorpe family with us. That would be David Proctor, who's got all sorts of Epthorpe family stories and so forth. And so David, talk to us a little bit about the Epthorpe. Uh, yes, Bob, they are quite a story. Uh, they were two brothers, uh, John Epthorpe and William Lee, and they, they were in the Union Army. Um, in fact, William Lee was an uh, officer in the United States Colored Troops, and John was just a soldier, but um, they came to Tallahassee during Reconstruction, and what a story it was. Uh, John became involved with the new Lincoln School for African Americans during Reconstruction. He was an early principal. William Lee was involved with the Freedmen's Bureau, and uh, William Lee actually ended up on the Board of Trustees, I think for a brief term, of the West Florida Seminary. So, and of course, their descendants. They aren't all in St. John's Cemetery. Uh, William Lee went back home and was buried up north. John is just right across the street in the Old City Cemetery. Um, but other members of the Apthorps are here. For example, Emma Apthorp, uh, she was uh, one of their descendants and was involved with the uh, one of the lynching schools in Tallahassee. So she was uh, supposedly attacked by one of the uh, victims of the lynching. So there's all kind of things here. Uh, Winifred Weeks at Thorpe, I actually met her as a young person, as a young child. She was born in 1804. Uh, so there's quite a family here, and they were, especially the Apthor, Apthor brothers, John and William Lee, uh, very involved in St. John's, very involved in reconstruction in Leon County. And just to add a little bit to it, uh, John's daughter, Agnes Apthorpe, was my grandmother. And there's all kinds of stories about her, but John had been had received a degree from Amherst, so the education ran in their family. So Agnes attended Florida State College. Well, this is prior to it being made into Florida State College for Women under the Buckman Act. But she got a liberal arts degree, and not surprisingly, she supported women's suffrage uh, when the St. John's rector was preparing her for her wedding to my grandfather, the issue arose in the old pre, the old 1898 prayer book still had women say obey in the vows. Well, Agnes, with her FSC education and her notions, as they would have said, about women's suffrage and so on, uh, she refused to say obey. And the rector wouldn't budge on it, so she moved her whole wedding over to the Jacksonville Episcopal Church. So, all kind of stories. Now, she's actually buried in Oakland Cemetery, but her relatives are here in the after plot. I thought we would wind up our, uh, our tour of some of the highlights of the St. John Cemetery this afternoon by pausing at the grave of um, Ann Cawthon Booth. And this is a recent grave. Um, Judge Booth died in June of 2021. She was the first female appellate court judge in the state of Florida, the first DCA. And Marjorie, our esteemed vice president, was her law clerk until she retired in 2005. And Judge Booth and her husband, Ed, married us on September 30th, 
uh, 2000. And so it's, it's utterly appropriate, I think, that we stop here and we have a little something uh, to, to, to lay on her grave. We love the Booths a lot. I mean, Judge Booth was a character of the highest order of the aren't we all? Just a reminder to everyone, and, and Betty, thank you, and David for being part of this today, but, uh, but uh, Betty and David will be speaking to the Tallahassee Historical Society at our December 8th meeting at St. John's Episcopal at St. John's Episcopal Church. It's our Christmas meeting, which means dinner, which means everybody brings a dish or a potluck and the Historical Society provides turkey and so forth. And we will have a, we will have a, all of us, I think, have a really, really very good time. So uh, thank, thank you both for being part of this. Thing. Absolutely, Bob. And it's such a terrific project. There's so much Florida history here. There's so much Leon County history. From territorial to the present, it's all here. So I can assure you we have only scratched the surface. Oh, now I see the crimson wave, the fountain deep and wide. Jesus, my Lord, mighty to save, points to his wounded side. The cleansing wave I see, I see, I plunge and, oh, it cleanseth me. Oh, praise the Lord, it cleanseth me. It cleanseth me, yes, cleanseth me.